I'm so sorry that I can't go to the meeting because uh, of the coronavirus 19 regulations. First, uh, let, let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Feng Zhiyuan. Now I'm a junior student from Xi'an Jiao Tong University. My major is computer science and technology. Now I'm the first author of this paper, Deep, Deep Evidential Learning in Diffusion Convolutional Recurrent Neural Network. Uh, let's start with the background. Uh, image a situation where you are driving on the road and uh, your navigation tells you the traffic conditions. Uh, we can image our navigation as a graph neural network model. Obviously, uh, a problem arising. Can we trust it? This leads to the credibility of the model. Uh, that is, it is really important for us to provide the uncertainty quantification of the uh, model's prediction. Okay, let me briefly introduce our tasks. The traffic forecasting problem, uh, that is the spatial temporal forecasting. The goal of uh, traffic forecasting is to predict the, the future traffic speed given previously obs observed traffic follow from uh, and correlated sensors on the road network. And we can, re we can re represent the sensor network as a weighted directed graph G. And the new is a set of nodes, and the epsilon is a set of edges, and the W is a weighted adjacency matrix. And, uh, and uh, uh, the traffic forecasting problem aim, aims to learn a uh, function edge that maps T prime historical graph signals to future T graph signals given a, uh, we can say this formula here. Uh, for uncertainty quantification, methods are statistically uh, divided into two types, frequentist method and Bayesian method. The frequentist does not assume any prior distribution, uh, does not refer to past experience, and only conducts probability inference according to existing data. However, Bayesian will assume the existence of a prior distribution and then use sampling to gradually modify the prior distribution and approximate uh, the real distribution. Uh, we can make a uh, summary. Uh, the biggest difference between them is whether to allow the use of a pair probability dist uh, distribution. Okay, uh, for frequentist method, although it is computationally cheaper for a single uh, confidence interval, but require retrain for different intervals because its method is based on sampling. Uh, it, it, it uh, we are uh, at a higher computational cost in forming multiple confidence intervals. Uh, for Bayesian methods, uh, method which plays the probability pairs over network weights and use uh, sampling to approximate output variance. But there are several limitations. Uh, in Bayesian methods, uh, which including the intractability of directly inference uh, inferring the pastel distribution of the weights uh, by given data. The computational, uh, the computational expense of uh, sampling during inference. The biggest, uh, the biggest uh, limitation of both the frequentist and the Bayesian is that they need to sample for gradually, approx uh, for gradually approximating the real distribution. And therefore, there will be problems if uh, too few samples are sampled, the distribution obtained may be different from the true distribution. Uh, if too many samples are sampled, it will take lot. It, it will take lots of time. In contrast, evidential deep learning formulates learning as the evidence acquisition process, which could uh, get uncertainty quantification by placing uh, evidential pairs over the original Gaussian likelihood function. Uh, then we can train the neural network to infer the hyper um, parameters of the evidential distribution without sampling.
And uh, because uh, basin and uh, frequencies the method already have achieved good performance on the tasks of uncertainty quantification in graph neural network. Therefore, we try to apply evidential deep learning to graph neural network to provide this uncertainty quantification of output uh, predictions. Next, let me introduce the main contribution of uh, uh, my paper. And the first is that we apply evidential deep learning to graph neural network and use DC RNN as deep learning models, uh, using it to learn and use it to learn uncertainty quantification in graph neural network task. And we chose the second is we chose the main intervals goals as a as a metric of uncertainty measurement and uh, and uh, compare it with other baselines. And our our exp the third is that we our experiment in in a real world data set shows that evidential deep learning with DCRN has a good performance in uncertainty quantification. Uh, next, uh, I will introduce the most important part is the evidential deep learning. When we consider the problem where the observed target Y uh, are drawn from a Gaussian uh, distribution. But now with the unknown mean and the variance mu and sigma square, uh, we model this by placing a pair distribution on mu and sigma square. If we assume observations are drawn from a Gaussian, this leads to placing a Gaussian pair on the unknown mean and an uh, inverse gamma pair on the unknown variance log analysis. Our aim is to estimate a posterior distribution. To obtain an uh, approximation for the true posterior, we assume that the estimated distribution can be factorized like this. Uh, this our approximate this source uh, our approximation takes the form of the Gaussian conjugate pair, the normal inverse uh, gamma distribution. We can say the formula here. And uh, for Bayesian probability theory, uh, the model evidence or marginal likelihood is defined uh, uh, as the likelihood of an observation. So the y given uh, given the evidential distribution parameters m uh, and uh, is computed by ma by marginal uh, lessing over the likelihood parameter theta. However, uh, in the case of placing a normal inverse gamma distribution pair on our Gaussian likelihood function, uh, an analytic solution does exist. Uh, it's like this. It's, 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 uh, it's, uh, uh, the p is submitted to the this distribution, and this st is the student t distribution. And uh, so next, uh, let me introduce the uh, evidential regression network. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is a scheme of uh, architecture of the evidential regression network. In the left uh, uh, is an overview of the evidential regression network architecture. Uh, the evidential regression network can output uh, the conjugate pair distribution, that is the normal inverse gamma distribution with the simplified uh, examples of rows of uh, the outputs. Uh, this is uh, for parameters of the NIG distribution. Uh, it's composed by the gamma, nu, and alpha and beta. And the model's prediction is gamma. OK, uh, so next I will introduce the loss function of uh, evidential deep learning. The loss function of evidential deep learning consists of two parts. The first one is the maximizing the model fit. In order to maximize the model fit, we can minimize the negative logarithm marginal likelihood loss. Uh, and uh, 
So second part is minimizing the evidence uh, deep learning in on arrows. Evidential deep learning also proposed a method to solve the problem that uh, how to regularize uh, training by applying on by applying an in, in character evidence uh, penalty uh, or higher or, or a higher uncertainty pair, which is in order to minimize the uh, uh, evidence on in character uh, predictions. And uh, the final, uh, the, and the total loss function is here. And the lambda is the uh, regularization coefficient. And uh, for deep learning model, we chose uh, diffusion convolutional recurrent uh, neural network. And we can look at this picture. And uh, the diffusion convolutional recurrent neural network uh, uh, is a holistic uh, approach that can capture both spatial and temporal dependencies among time series using diffusion convolutional and con using uh, diffusion convolution and the sequence to sequence learning framework together with uh, scheduled sampling. And so the diffusion convolutional recurrent neural network uh, is uh, readily applicable to many spatial temporal forecasting tasks. And uh, I have to mention the this. For evidential deep learning, uh, improving uh, evidential deep learning via multi-task learning uh, think the basic goal uh, of deep learning is to achieve good prediction accuracy, not just, uh, not, not just uh, uncertainty. So they proposed the Lipschitz MSE loss, uh, and this loss function is an additional loss function which you can uh, regulate the gradient if uh, there is an increase in uncertainty. So it can improve the model. So it can improve the model prediction accuracy and uh, mitigate uh, the gradient uh, conflicts. The so MSC evidential deep learning uh, is just to replace the Lipschitz loss with uh, the original MSC loss. And the final uh, loss function is just to combine, uh, combine this uh, additional one with the original uh, evidential deep learning loss. Uh, so next, I will introduce the main, uh, our main evaluation matrix that is the uh, main interval score, that is MS. So MS is uh, defined to evaluate the uh, uh, merge of the prediction interval. Uh, we define alpha as the confidence interval and the, and the C as the real valued random variables. The so U and the L are the upper and the lower uncertainty, uh, uh, sorry, the so U and the L are the upper and the lower boundary of a confidence interval. And for larger samples, the formula of MS is, uh, is here. And for the limited samples, is here. And uh, we can analyze it. So, so MS is, uh, uh, is, con uh, so MS, uh, uh, so score function, so MS, uh, is uh, consists of uh, is consists of uh, three penalty atoms. The first penalty term is the gap between uh, between the two bounds, and the second one is that the situation that that predict values which higher than the upper bound, and the third is the predictions uh, under the confidence lower bound. This three these three penalty are mainly estimation of uncertainty. Uh, so emphasize the penalty term is that uh, once the predicted value exceeds the boundary, which is uh, in line with the MS goal of encouraging the contain more samples values. Okay, the so last one is the experiment. So the results of the two best performing uh, models in the experiment are showing uh, showing bold, as uh, showing how you can say it. And from the definition of the mean interval scores, that is MS, 
we know that uh, the smaller of MIS, uh, the better of uh, uncertainty estimation. And from the table above, we can say that evidential deep learning uh, uh, learn uh, that the evidential deep learning achieve a good performance in uncertainty quantification. Uh, more details are in paper. If any questions about this paper or this video, please uh, feel free to contact me. My email is here. Thank you for listening.